there will be several hurdles that Christians must get through. And we have an assumption that the enemy is very, very happy we have. And that is that what kind of faith we have right now is enough to get us into heaven. And if that faith that you have is, I'm going to stay with his voice throughout until I'm dead, then yes. But if you have it as far as your position, your, there's some places of stay that isn't right because it's not ready to hit all the hurdles. There are many hurdles that we must pass. Our obedience must be sound and fulfilled through every hurdle. When he says few will find it, he wasn't kidding around. Because there's so, so many deceptions. Other than it being a shepherd-led voice. In this place, you're going to find inconceivable brokenness. Like that box, fish, box jellyfish guy. And the Lord said, will you be willing to beg for your life? There's a time when you're going to have to beg for your life before the Lord. To show him how much you are really relying on him. There's an element to begging. Like God please. You know. Like where you're really desperate. I've had moments like that where I was choking on some food. Because I've had struggle, struggles with my throat. I have had um, struggles with my physical body. Thinking that I didn't feel like I was going to live any longer. That's why I started getting into powders and just different types of things because my body was starting to act like it didn't work. And I'm like begging God, God, because I'm really like, it's really scary. There's different times when I've been through really heavy weather. <coughs> and begging. Hmm. I think the begging place is a broken place. It's a desperate place. And it's a hurdle that must be done. It's a hurdle that must be passed. I almost think that there's some people who are just a little bit more easy. They don't see themselves as much, but a lot of people do. And so there's an element of, of kind of like saying, okay, I'm taking my mask off, Lord. I play this little game with everybody else, but I'm not going to play it with you, Lord taking my mask off and I'm going to beg for my life before you it's one of the secrets to my ministry when she's doing well is that I know how to beg for my life and tears are on your floor that's when you don't, you don't just go to a cemetery or a funeral or have a hard time in your life and tears start coming down but you you facing the Lord on an eternal level and tears are on the floor and Christians who don't have tears on they have their TV on they don't weep they watch they're cozy with God they forgot to beg for their life there's not an element of begging for your life anymore the tears should be on but no the TV's on because they don't weep. The television was made by the devil for Christians who don't weep over their own sin. Christians who don't weep over their own sin are not setting themselves up to pass every hurdle that you must pass. It's like you got, the devil give you just enough to almost make it. But you don't weep. Christians who don't weep are terrifying they think they're so confident and they think it's all in the bag but I'm telling you that it isn't real that's a lie prayerless tearless careless 
weeplingless men and women who do beg for their life, knowing that you're not there yet. We want to fare more than well. Like that movie, that midnight movie or Amish movie, talking about how we want to do really well. We want to obey the commands of God. To the door. A door of grace will be wide open for us. And the Lord will say, oh, come on in. Come on in. Yeah. There are hurdles that you must pass. Things that you must achieve on your goal. This is the goal of the ministry, is to let people know there are experiences before God that you must achieve before Him. And you're not going to get them like a peacock. You're going to be going there through there like a pauper begging for something to live with. A pauper is begging for the food, begging for bread. God. God. You know, there's no prayers like that in churches anymore. You don't, you don't see those kind of prayers in churches anymore. The prayer meeting is my, my toe feels, yeah, I felt an itch on my toe. Oh, somebody I know is in sin. Oh, thank you, Lord, for all these mighty miracles you're pouring through my life, God. Just something you're either boasting or you're, you're tattling and you're, you're just complaining. You're judging, you're exposing people. The prayers of like the most deadest people you've ever heard of, the most demonic people in the world. There was a woman that was in our circle of friends and she, we had a prayer room and she prayed like the longest prayers and they were, <clears throat> I never listened to them, but somehow I accidentally skipped through part of it and I heard her, her naming names and it reminded me of another enemy of I have, that I've got a lot of things written down about her in case she ever tries to attack me. I'll have my arsenal to say, here it is, read it and weep. Well, someone else was doing the same thing in every prayer. She was mentioning everybody in the church and t talking about, God, please help them with their sin and help them with their wickedness and help them with this and just went down the line. Just this, just like the perfect tool of Satan to destroy churches. Talks all nice, talks all great. Those are the worst kind of people you've ever met in your life. The people that just come in and they do everything right for so long and then they just start turning on you and ruining everything like that absolute fool. Evil, wicked people that are full of the devil. This one happens to be the one that's literally harvesting Islam. People coming into Islam, they come through her. They go to her house, live for free so they can go to school. They can pay their own way to school. It's a lot easier when you don't have to pay rent. But don't worry, there's a nice Christian woman who will help them. They'll help them come in. She's part of the Islamic invasion. Part of the one. In fact, you can hear a sermon. Because she actually brought her Muslim husband to the service one time. You can hear him talking in a service. I'll put it. I'll put the link below. It's one of my best sermons I've ever done. It's only 20 minutes long. At the beach, we went to the beach, uh, Oceanside Beach. and found a spot to gather. After everybody was acting like a bunch of crazies that day, too. Anyways. But there's hurdles that we must get through. I'm not talking about prayers. Like, you know, that's not a prayer meeting. It's either boasting. It's either exposing other people. Or bragging. Or, um... Complaining. Uh, it's not praying. Let me tell you what, what kind of words come out of your mouth for prayer. You're praying to God for praise Him for who He is. Your prayers are thanking Him for what He, who did all these great things for you, what He has done. You praise Him for who He is. You praise Him for what He has done. You praise Him for the changes He's made in your life. You praise Him. You thank Him for the things He's done and given you. You pray the prayer of confession, and you pray the prayer and confess your sins, and then here's the first time you ask of him. Same as you go through the entire, the priest goes through 
This is what prayers are supposed to be like. Dealing with your own sin. Dealing with your own shortcomings. Do you pray to God about your issues? Your own personal hang-ups or things you want to see come down. Idols that you want to see uprooted and pulled out. I remember a missionary was ripping all these weeds out of the, of the garden. Likes to grow flowers and says, I want God to rip the weeds out of my own heart. And I said, well, you brought me in your life, so probably you're going to get weeds ripped out of your heart because I've had some very large-scale arguments with them. And you find a missionary who likes to dress like a, like a whore. And that's exactly what a lot of these stupid Russian people do. Half the Russian Christians, you're vain and you're annoying. The other half is conservative and good job and God bless you. God bless the, God bless the Slavic community who dresses with clothes that cover your body. And doesn't look like you're trying to be like a fashion show knucklehead. Let me tell you one thing. Whether you cover your body and you're trying to be a fashion show or not, that is not the kingdom of God. <laughs> yes, we have bigger issues than that, but that still isn't the, the kingdom of God. And another thing while I'm at it, I'm going to make it really clear. It's become a new thing in America. It's becoming a new thing where it's no longer illegal for women to have to wear coverings over them. If you're 11 or older, there's 10 cities that says it's okay for you to be in public and not have a top on. There's six states, six entire states in America that says it's okay for women as long as you're 11 or older to be able to wear no top at all in public. And they say, well, if men can take their top off, so can we. Because it's all about this gender thing. Anything to, to mess with the gender issue when it comes to men and women is of Satan. When you're talking about God and you don't know that he's a man over a woman, that doctrine is of the devil. You think that we're not men or women, your doctrine of us is, a, is of the devil. Your doctrine of man is wrong. Your doctrine of God is wrong. You've got problems. You're talking like a new age. You're talking like a new age guru. I thought Joel Osteen was an idiot, and he is. You're worse. But getting off track here, getting too many rabbit trails. But there are hurdles that we must get by and we must have the right quality of a person you either have your tears on the floor or you have your tv on the tears are on the floor because you know you're in a position of begging for your life you're in a position to beg for your life you're not begging anymore you're not in a pauper position you're beggars. That's what you are. You you don't live as a beggar. Whenever you don't have the beggar mentality, you're not doing it right. You're begging. No, you're desperate for spiritual reality. That's why I hate cessationism, and I count it as Satanism. If your doctrine says there is no gift, your doctrine is of the devil. There's nothing in the Bible that would indicate that at all. Except for when you get to heaven, you don't need a gift because you're right there. It's like I have a distant engagement right now. I have a distant marriage. My wife doesn't live in the same state as I do. She lives very far from me, and it's horrible. So she sends me the little videos and says, Hi, how are you? And it makes my day. But you know what? We don't have to make videos when, I'm, when, I, when we get to live together. We're married now, but we don't have to make videos when I'm there because she's right there. We can make videos for memories for our future, but now I need videos of her just to be like, just to get like a little glimmer of what I want <clears throat> of when I have her in person. So my wife lives far away, and I live over here, and our goal is to live here with four of us: her daughter, her sister, and me, and her all four of us, and her zoo, and so. Uh, the daughter is not able to keep up with the zoo because they have uh, many animals. And that's something I'm inheriting. I'm inheriting Noah's Ark with a nice lady. 
got a nice daughter, and I got a nice zoo. And so, and also I got her sister as well. My lady's sister is going to be coming to help out with stuff, so it's going to be a good match. I don't believe it's going to be right. I knew it's not right. I know that me and my lady is inseparable. And I know that her and her daughter are obviously inseparable. And her daughter and her auntie, my sister-in-law, is inseparable. So there's a... And then the animals is inseparable from the daughter. She must have animals. And I must have a man cave because of that. Amen. Really nice animals. Except Black Willie, the black cat, has been through a lot and he's scared of me still. He sleeps on the pillow with my wife, but doesn't want to sleep with, doesn't even want to be in the same room as me. He doesn't even talk to me unless he wants something. That's where we're at. But you can see there's an attitude of the heart before the Lord. And you tell the Lord, I understand the methods of the Methodist Church is what this West Side Holiness is preaching because it's the best. The West Side Holiness vision is tapping into the strengths of all the best denominations in world history. Is Baptist completely wrong? No, they're not. Some of the attitudes of these people is just like Pentecostal. And that means they have a lot of goodness in them. The more Pentecostal you have in you, the better you are, the better person you are. The less stupid you are, the less Calvinist, the better you are. You agree with my doctrine? I don't care what you call yourself. I've heard Catholics who have more intelligence than, than most Calvinists that I've met. And I used to, I, I, when it comes down to Cal, Catholic, I usually bone crush them and say there's basically no hope for this doctrine of hell. But I've met when I hear the people talking, I'm like, you have revelation of Christ, you don't receive the interpretation of all the catechism garbage. The one thing that you often hold to that is is hideous, is that the body and the blood of Christ and the communion transubstantiation which is a false doctrine there's a lot of people who do that there's like the old there's more of the super serious uh, Lutherans um, and there's super serious Reformed I don't know if Reformed do that or not but Catholics and some Lutherans and certain groups actually hold to that and I uh, personally don't hold to that at all Jesus is the great high priest, <clears throat> and he's the one who blesses the communion. So I, that, I can, that I can understand. But I cannot understand a man saying, I'm going to bless the communion. No. There's one man that we call father. That is of the devil to call a man father. Oh, father this and father that. Okay, great. <laughs> you're, you're at least 1% pagan. Because there's a lot of elements that go into a preacher. <laughs> Do you weep for these experiences? Because Methodist methods are the real deal. This is just one of the many ways it's been laid out by great men. There are, there are men who have had Calvinist top, top tones to them and were exceedingly excellent stature of men. I can feel there's still idolatry in my heart that needs to be uprooted. And it's embarrassing to say, it's a shame to say that I stand in the pulpits as a complete loser because I believe perfection. I believe in the doctrines of sinless perfection. I believe in that doctrine, and um, that's what I think of, and then I still don't perform like that. I lose my cool. I can see that there's still places of flesh in me. Um, I can honestly say that my mouth has got cleaned up 
uh, by myself. You know, hardly anybody has ever heard me use dirty language. The lumber uh, realm, I don't know, so they got there and made it harder for me. Now, I think it was something a bit different than that. It's not the lumber yard that makes you swear. No one here needs to swear. In fact, the people I mean, Robbie, I've never heard you swear before. Everybody else cusses all the time. And Robbie never heard you swear. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> all by myself, I, I have. Since 2013, I have struggled with my mouth. And it's like, I can't believe that my mouth would do this. It's like so embarrassing before the Lord. I know that I got some bitterness because betrayed by a Baptist. That's why I hate Baptists so much because they believe such stupid doctrines and they live like stink bombs. And I just can't stand Baptists. Baptists just make me sick. If you're a good person, you're really a good, heartfelt, nice, godly people, there's some out there. And those are Christians. Genuine, converted Christians and they call themselves Baptists. Your doctrine is wrong and your heart is right. Catholics out there, Lutherans, Reformed, people that have the most stupidest doctrine in certain ways, excellent hearts before the Lord, love the Lord, good people. A lot of them is really born again, but they need to know something. As good as you are right now, can we take that careless bug out of your eyes, please? And start begging the Lord for your life again? We're going to be going through hurdles you can look at the list of salvation in many stages. And you want to experience these before the Lord yourself. Can you think, I feel like doing miracles right now. I feel like my faith is a miracle right now. Can you honestly, can you honestly say that's what's going on? Hopefully somewhat of a miracle. Of course, your faith is somewhat, it is somewhat of a miracle. You're even paying attention to the West Side at all. Then you must have some type of a miracle in you but can you say it's a miracle I'm trying to get you to say no to say I know that the miracle of my salvation could definitely be heightened let me tell you something Make, let me put the fear of God in you please I'm going to say it calmly but I want you to know no miracle no saving no salvation you must be born again of the Spirit of God. You must be born again of the Spirit of a God who tolerates no sin at all. You must be born again of the Spirit of a God who threw a third of his angels into hell. You must be born again of the spirit of the living God who throws fire on nations that forget God repeatedly. He comes as a warrior on a horse like Revelation 14, Revelation 16, Revelation 19, the wine press of the wrath of God. This is when he pours out his cup what's in the cup well it's either one of two things it's God from heaven throwing fire down on you throwing allowances of devils to come and inhabit uh, armies and destroy your nation that's why that happens yes demons invaded people and they came at you with fire and knives and swords and guns and chariots and whatever but God was the one who allowed that to happen. Did you know that God moves devils? He doesn't just move them out of a man into pigs. He also moves them into armies and they act like absolute idiots because they come against Israel. They come against Jerusalem like absolute demonized fools. And then God says, come against Israel and I will curse you. And the curse I have is going to be directly from heaven, like in Revelation chapter 20. Or he's going to come on a white horse, like Revelation 14, 16, and 19. The winepress of the wrath of God.
which almost everybody else, multitudes are going to be going there. It's chapter 7 that I like when I can see all these people standing before the throne of God, worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ to him who is on the throne and, and unto the Lamb. Be blessing and glory. Who are all these people? You know who they are. Those who died in the great tribulation. Don't ever say tribulation unless you mean tough times that Christians go through any time through history. Don't ever say tribulation. Well, you know, back, in, you know, coming down the line in the tribulation. As soon as you say tribulation, I know you don't know what you're talking about. You're just a, you're just kind of what they call an idiot parrot. You took an idiot pill before you said that. In fact, you took the whole bottle. That's why you talk like such an idiot. There's no such thing as a, tribu a, a tribulation. Life is filled with tribulations for them that are Christians. Everyone's going to suffer tribulation and persecution. You're being bad treatment, unfair treatment. You embrace that stuff and keep a good spirit. Do you weep? Do you weep before you whip with the word of God? Do you beg God for bread? You must live your entire existence in the dust. Begging, fearing, without the fear factor in your life of your own soul, begging for miracles to happen, knowing that, that your eternal soul depends on it. Your eternal soul depends on the miracles that must come as you experience new stages of biblical salvation. There's not just one stage, dude. That's only one stage. The one stagers are like Baptists and a bunch of other idiots. They don't grow. It's all under the blood, brother. Not anymore, it's not. Because you're not performing right. And you don't even care. And you don't even weep. <laughs> 